Good morning, everyone. I'll step maybe forward so you can see me. <laughs> um, thank you so much, everyone, for being here today in person and remotely uh, at the opening plenary of World Water Week 2024. Uh, thank you all also for uh, offering your opening remarks today uh, after me. Uh, my name is Melissa Melpignano, and I'm one of this year's conference co-chairs, along with Dr. Liz Walsh, Dr. Judith Rios, and Luis Garnica, right here. All together, we have worked with the members of the organizing committee, with numerous staff members at UTEP and uh, at the Universidad Autonoma, Autonoma de Ciudad Juarez, with students, artists, institutional community partners in the Paso del Norte region, in Chihuahua, in Texas, and beyond for this fourth edition of World Water Week 2024, whose theme is Bridging Borders, Leveraging Water for Peace. The process of World Water Week started right here, this building, about four and a half years ago, uh, when the building was still under construction. Then uh, I met Dr. Alex Mayer, a groundwater engineer, and I am a dance scholar. So we shared from our very different standpoints and methods, our interest in environmentalism, in ecology, in water rights and water scarcity, and water research, of course. Um, this conversation went on and expanded in many different ways. Engaging our colleagues and expanding our circles of collaboration, Dr. Alex Mayer and Dr. Liz Walsh established the One Water Cluster, which currently includes 38 UTEP affiliates, plus students, postdoc researchers, and other collaborators, while uh, my colleagues, Paula Lopez Ramirez, Chris Raymond, and I co-founded the artist-led collective Somos Agua. And together, One Water and Somos Agua organized the first World Water Week conference back in 2021. In 2021, the first conference was virtual, of course, during the pandemic, but that was just the beginning. And since the beginning, World Water Week wanted to offer an interdisciplinary, uh, binational, free, and public uh, community-engaged platform to discuss water scarcity, water access, water justice, to increase visibility for different modes of conducting water research and crafting impactful practices to shape opportunities for new connections and collaborations beyond disciplinary and institutional hierarchies. Every year, our conference theme takes inspiration from the theme of the United Nations World Water Day. And then we adapt it and tweak it to our own conversations and needs for our communities. In 2021, the, the theme was revaluing water. In 2022, groundwater making the invisible visible. Last year, it was accelerating change through partnerships. This year's theme, Bridging Borders, Leveraging Water for Peace, not only tackles an urgent task for our uh, region, but also at the global level. It also allows us to dig deeper into some of the intersectional processes that perpetuate water conflicts here and globally. Our keynote speaker this year is environmental historian CJ Alvarez, professor at UT Austin, author of the award-winning book, Borderland, Border Water, a History of Construction on the U.S.-Mexico Divide. And his second monograph, The Arid, De the Arid Heart, is a groundbreaking history of the Chihuahuan Desert. In his talk on Wednesday at this time, entitled The River Below, Border Water and the Search for Peace, Professor Alvarez explores the complex history of river straightening, 
relocating and channeling that took place between El Paso and Juarez to arrive at a better understanding of the relationship between water and peace. Our guest artist this year is the community engaged choreographer, Alison Orr, the artistic director of the, the Austin based dance company, Forklift Dance Works. Alison Orr creates performances, not with dancers, but with the people whose work sustains our everyday life. And here in El Paso, she's starting a performance project with waterline uh, workers, frontline water workers. On Thursday, she will offer a community movement workshop for all. You don't have to have any background in dance or movement to, to, to take it. And in the afternoon, she will engage in a conversation on effective interdisciplinary uh, research methods based on her own book, Dance Works, Histories of uh, Creative Collaboration, published by Wesleyan University Press. So along with our keynote speaker, our guest artist, War Water Week this year offers more than 40 events in both El Paso and Juarez, open to our communities. The conference we conclude on Saturday with a science and performance-based series of events at the Rio Bosque Wetlands Park, which is very dear to us. All our research started there, and it's also the 50th anniversary of the Rio Bosque, so we really hope you can join us there on Saturday. So with a deep commitment to rigorous research and civic engagement, World Water Week 2024 really hopes to harness the unifying power of water, paving the way for a future where just cooperation can flow, nurturing peace and prosperity for all. Finally, before I offer the mic to uh, our institutions for uh, the opening remarks, I um, want us to acknowledge that we are meeting on unceded indigenous land and that more work needs to be done to truly recognize and repair the legacy of colonialism. Here we recognize and pay our respects to the Lipan, Mescalero, and Chiricahua Apache, Piro, Manso, Suma, Cumano, Isleta del Subpueblo, Piro, Manso, Tiwa Indian tribe, or the Pueblo of San Juan de Guadalupe and Tortugas Pueblo, and all the other indigenous peoples that live on Turtle Island. And now the word goes uh, to our institutional representatives for the opening remarks. And then the organizing committee will, will take the mic. So I want to invite Adriana Resendez Moldanado for the opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much and good morning everyone and thank you very much for thank you very much for the invitation to the World Water Week 2024 for the, the opportunity to participate with you in this important event and share our vision of water issues at the border and the schemes that um, we are implementing to address uh, the problems at the border. Water is the most important natural resource we have. A very common phrase is describe it, water is life, el agua es vida. That is why I want to highlight the importance of this type of events to promote knowledge for better water use. Access to drinking water is a human right. That's the reason we must seek cooperation scheme that includes all sectors of society, including the three level of governments uh, universities, users, stakeholders, and also um, in the society. The world is currently facing a climate change that causes a strong and prolonged droughts, floods, and other weather phenomena like hurricanes. And the border is not an exception of that. Mexico and the United States share more than 3,000 kilometers of border and three international rivers. In the past, we knew how to divide the waters uh, between both countries through an international agreement, the 19, 1944 Water Treaty. Now, many years later, we face a big challenge with water availability due to the drought and the scarcity. Throughout our, our shared history, we have learned 
that the best way to address a problem such water shortage is through cooperation. Through cooperation, we have found different mechanisms that allow us to face drought years in a lesser way, promoting better irrigation system and optimizing water for human consumption. Cri crisis always represents opportunities to improve in every sense. With increase in demand and the reduction of water availability, both countries have understood that it's necessary for us to have a better water management through cooperation schemes. Confrontation will never be an adequate formula to address this issue. So much so the cooperation scheme that prevailed between both countries to address their common water problems are a global example that seek to be replicated in other parts of the world. I would like to highlight this because the cooperation between Mexico and the United States to share water issues, to, to, to share the problems is an example of, of, of in the world. And we need to continue in this, in this uh, kind, in esta forma de trabajar. We need to continue on that. Both countries are united by water and we have the responsibility to manage the use of water in the best way. A very important scheme is science, study, and research. We must address the problem of scarcity from a basic, uh, from a scientific basis. We must use tools for the analysis and modeling of water measurement alternatives, new technologies for information gathering, uh, geographic information system, among other tools. One of the key issues to build trust in both countries is the exchange of information. That is a very good relationship and communication between all the stakeholders is very important. I would like to highlight something here. We have an example of cooperation on Colorado River. We have been working for um, a long period of time and we are increasing that trust between two countries. So we need to replicate that on Rio Bravo because we need to do something on Rio Bravo. There is no water on the Rio Bravo, but we need to continue and we need to, I would like to say this in Spanish, tenemos que luchar por esto, tenemos que luchar por, por tener este, este intercambio de información, por tener esta confianza y por hacer lo que ya hemos hecho en el pasado en el Rio Colorado. We must look for a scheme for conservation, reuse, and uh, new sources of water so that we so that as we make progress in this scheme we will be better prepared to face a future uh, which at the moment is increasingly adverse i thank you once again for the invitation to participate in this event and i wish you uh, success and thank you very much Thank you so much. Uh, let's pass the mic to Luis Alfonso Rivera Campos, Rector de la Universidad Autónoma de Chihuahua. Thank you. I will try to uh, speak a little English on the first uh, part of my uh, speech. Um, I was here with you uh, last year on the opening event, on the opening day of the event of Water Week. And uh, this is, uh, as a president, my second opportunity uh, to be here in the opening day of a very uh, important week. And I saw uh, some uh, good uh, results on the on the work we do together and I want to express for those that join us for a first time uh, last uh, uh, opening day ceremony or uh, day I was here the same as the same uh, day as today on a normal day and the sun was very hard and it was a dry, very dry day. One year later, 
I'm here in one not normal day, in an opening week, but we have a raining day. We have water. <laughs> so we wanted to uh, express our uh, uh, happiness to join this great uh, uh, event because the university, the university of uh, Autonomous of Chihuahua that uh, I represent has two main topics to research for research that we motivate our students and teachers, our, our researchers. One is migration and the other is water. And we want to uh, give the important uh, uh, level for this, uh, 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 this water week. And uh, as a delegate, as a delegation of University of Autonoma Chihuahua, join me, the Dean of uh, Chemistry faculty, uh, some teachers, some uh, students that we will participate, they will participate during these days. So we want to take, thank everyone who gives uh, an effort to, to produce this uh, week, this water week. This is a, a, a very important opportunity because in this week, you will uh, be in touch with another universities, with another uh, uh, consul or uh, diplomatic authority, and uh, with the... Uh, Another part that is very important on the water uh, topic, that is the international uh, boundary and commission, uh, uh, IBWC. So uh, we, we don't have to do another meeting to invite someone who left just here. We are here, everybody. So enjoy uh, this uh, week. Uh, aprovecha esta semana, como se dice. Take advantage of these days, and uh, uh, and I will. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure will be a very productive week. Uh, I cannot uh, end my speech to give a special thanks to the president of, of UTEP, uh, <clears throat> President Wilson, that every time. We came here as a, a delegation of Chihuahua, as a president, as a little group with teachers, have a special um, uh, reception for us, and I'm sure for everyone. So I wish this week will be a great for you, and uh, thank you. And since it was mentioned, Mr. Ramon Macias, from the uh, International Boundary and Water Commission. Thank you so much for being here too. We're gonna talk a, a lot about diplomacy these days. So a lot of work for all of you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of the US Section Commissioner, uh, Marilena Hinev, Dr. Marilena Hinev, she could not make it here today. So she, she sends her apologies but she is very thankful that she was given the opportunity and, and she passed that on to me to, to uh, open your remarks of, of what we do and the importance of the binational cooperation and exchange of information and understanding what we do as an organization. Um, you know, it's, it's important to be able to kick off these types of events that show the community coming together and how we work together. And one of the things, and, and I echo uh, Commissioner DeSantis' comments and I'm sure Commissioner uh, Hined does as well, is between the two of them, they have really joined forces together and have become a very strong team and very strong relationship. And they they uh, convey that message to the staff and to the, the, the commission where we have to work together in unity. Um, me, I'm, I'm the principal engineer, Ramon Macias the third, and I'm the principal engineer for engineering department. You know, and with coming new, I come, I'm, I'm new with IBWC. So this is a new organization. This organization was established in, in 1889 and is responsible for applying the boundary and water treaties between the United States and Mexico, settling any differences that may arise in their application. We are the boundary. We work all along from California all the way down to South Texas. We have to coordinate. 
we're in it, we're an international boundary comprised of two sections, the Mexican section, the U.S. section, and we're co-located here in the El Paso, the Al Juarez region. Where else can it work better than being right in the middle to handle the border going to California, handle the border going down south? You got a land border and you have a water border. And it's important that we're able to manage both sides of that. Um, you know, we're, we're a federal agency and, and we fall under the Department of State. Um, and, and our mission is to uh, apply the treaties regarding boundary demarcation, as I mentioned, ownership of water and delivery and water sanitation, water quality and flood control. Within our flood control authority, we co-own and operate three international dams, Amistad Dam, Anzaldúa's Dam and Etamal Dam. And that's important because that's where the water comes into, we store and we share, and we have to make sure that we're unified on how we maintain, especially at this time of drought. We have to be careful of how we handle the water, how we, we uh, share our resources. Um, we, also, we also work and operate two hydro, hydroelectric dams along that as well. With our water to quality authority, we operate two wastewater treatment plants, one in San Diego, one in Nogales. And so it, as, a, as a unified uh, uh, international binational community, we have to work together throughout the entire process of, of what we do, how we share resources, because it's important not only to the US side, but to the Mexican side as well, the United States and Mexico. We work together as one, and where else do you have that boundary that is so unified other than here? We have 11 field offices throughout California all the way down to, to South Texas. And each office has its counterpart. So you have an office on the US side, you have an office on the Mexican side, and we collaborate and work together always. And, and that's, that's the important message that Commissioner Descendis, Commissioner Yined would like to impart is that, you know, we share our border-wide responsibility. And by applying our binational solutions, that's how we bridge our border. So we, uh, we really would like to thank you for uh, allowing us to attend, allowing us to speak at least together. And, and really, we're looking forward to a very successful event. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now Mauricio Ibarra Ponce de Leon, El Consul General de Mexico in El Paso. Thank you. Muy buenos días a todos. Good morning. Um, I want to start by, by something that uh, President Rivera mentioned at the end is basically by thanking UTEP for organizing this type, type of events, by uh, recognizing President Heather Wilson for this strengthen, for strengthening the collaboration with Mexican universities, which is key for, for, for this region. And for that, I want to thank also and recognize Arturo Barrio, the Vice President for International Affairs, for all the collaboration uh, that they are doing. And to thank all the uh, organizers of this important event, that this is the second time that I also uh, participate. Also, I want to recognize, because it's it, it's great that we have them here. First, uh, Commissioner Resendiz, pleasure having you here. President Rivera, always uh, very important to, to have you here. We have uh, Judith Rios representing UACJ. No, uh, my regards to President Camargo, please. Uh, uh, Ramon Macias from, from the IBWC, uh, thank you for coming. And for me, coming and talking to you, uh, giving these welcoming remarks for this type of event is really important. Water issues are key for what we do in the region. Um, I always like saying that the former uh, uh, boss of mine would say that the only issue in the bilater bilateral relation between Mexico and the US that would not let him sleep at night is water. Why? Because it's key for everyone. And, and we have to know that it's key for a border region. And that's why I always say that we need to take advantage of the key knowledge, the top knowledge that we have in this border region between El Paso eh, and Ciudad Juarez. Uh, we have the IBWC on the US side. We have SILA Mexico, which is basically the counterpart on the Mexican side. We have the people who really know the issues here. And, and what is interesting is that we need to be very uh, open 
in discussing everything that the, the, the commissioner mentioned, no? for example, the reuse of water, the scarcity of water, the conservation of water, it's important. Uh, the impact of the water in the, in the environment, it's key. For a region like this, a border region, for example, let me tell you if you don't know, water and these two institutions are key for whenever we are developing border infrastructure because everything has an impact. Since we are divided by a river, it has an impact on the river. So we need to take uh, in consideration everything that they do for developing, developing border infrastructure, for example. Issues, very current issues that we're going to be facing as, as we move along. Here, everybody has, has heard the issue of near shoring, ally shoring, all these issues related to trade. Well, water is key for taking advantage of these trade opportunities that we see worldwide. No, and people are looking at the region, the border plex, including El Paso, Juarez, eh, but also Las Cruces, the Doñana County here in New Mexico. But water is key for companies if they want to relocate here in the region. So this is really important. I'm really glad that you guys are going to be uh, focusing on different issues during this week. And I will end just by saying something that my colleagues here at UTEP, they say, oh, here he goes again. We need to develop a course, either a BA, a master's degree, or something like related to water. We have the talent here. We need, we have the knowledge. And I'm going to be pushing because we need to prepare the young people who are going to be taking care of water issues as we move along. So if you are interested in, in that, you should, you should ask your authorities at the universities, let's develop a course on water-related issues, on the difference. I know it's, it's a huge topic, but I think we need to, to start moving along. And just, I'm saying that, because, but I know that they have already started, you know, talking between the universities in Mexico and UTEP about doing so. Now they have now very important programs, but I think we need to, to do something even bigger because this is a key issue for the border region. So thank you. I, I uh, thank you for, for being here and I hope you enjoy this whole week and learn a lot and discuss all these issues that are very important for the future of this great binational community. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, our VP for International Relations, Arturo Barrio. Thank you. Good morning, buenos dias. Before I start, as Melissa mentioned, and I know, I know Alex, they talked about the interdisciplinary approach. I know some of you are coming from liberal arts. Can you raise your hands? Show hands, no worry, you're not breaking anything. Just bring your hands up. Uh, engineering, science, am I missing anybody? So the reason why I talk about this is before I came to UTEP, I worked for the Mexican government for about 13 years and I was collaborating a lot with the IBWC. And the reason why I bring that up is some of the top diplomats I have the opportunity to work with are the ones that are working in the IBWC. That's how complex their jobs are because not only they understand the technical issues, but they understand the diplomacy, as Consul General mentioned, of the complexity of this issues for the binational relation. So I wanna take this opportunity to thank Comisionada Resendez for joining us today. Ingeniero Principal, gracias por acompañarnos. Uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's very important the job you do. And, and I know a lot of people are not aware of everything you do, but we're very grateful because if it wouldn't be for the IBWC and the CELAS, there would be a lot more issues between our countries. So thank you. I also want to do a special thanks to Presidente Rivera, nuestro amigo, rector. Just so you know, he drove this morning from Chihuahua and he's coming back today after the session. He did that because he's committed to supporting the efforts we're doing in one of the priority areas. So gracias, rector. Te apreciamos mucho el esfuerzo de venir. It's a four-hour drive plus crossing the border. So thank you. Thank you for coming today. Consul, Consul, we have an update for you. So there's a, a summer program on water diplomacy that will be launching in collaboration with WATCH and I believe with uh, Wasajota. So we're moving forward. And, and I want to be, you know, my colleagues 
where part of the organizers who deserve the credit have been working on those issues. Melissa, Alex has been a, a champion on the issue. Luis, everybody that's here is very committed to water. So I wanted to mention a couple of things. Water Day, it's been celebrated by the United Nations since 1993. So this is a very important day to create awareness. The United Nations highlight that there's about 2.2 billion people that live without access to safe water. You imagine that? 2.2 billion people. The theme that was selected is leveraging water for peace. I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's about 3 billion people that... Uh, worldwide depend on water that crosses national borders. This is huge. From 153 countries, there's only 24 that have a binational agreement. And I'm very honored to say that the IBWC and La Sila, which is a Mexican counterpart, was created in 1889. So this shows you how important water is for both countries. So this is something that is that we're very proud of. And I want to just recognize again, the work that the IBWC does. Uh, also, it's important to highlight that over time, there have been many incidents of cooperation, more than conflict. The United, the, and also just to conclude, the United Nations plays a great importance on the role of academia, of the universities, to be able to facilitate the dialogue. So that's the reason why I want to applaud the organizing committee having this effort on bringing awareness from different sides of the issue, coming all the way from the arts to the science and bringing everybody to be aware of how important water is for all. So I wish you all an, you know, an amazing week and hopefully between all of us to identify more collaboration opportunities to benefit our populations in our regions. Thank you all for this opportunity. Go Miners. Thank you so much, everyone. And and now um, the organizing committee members and uh, a guest, Eric Murillo, <laughs> will uh, will take the mic to unpack the conference theme briefly. Each of us will intervene uh, to to really focus on the words that uh, make up our title for this year from our own perspective, from our own lived experience. So one of the things that we have been doing as a organizing committee throughout these years is to really try to understand what interdisciplinarity means. And to us, it doesn't mean just to put together in a panel a person from dance and a person from biology. It's about sharing methods, learning from each other's methods and making uh, their frameworks, my frameworks, their conversation, the conversations that matters in other fields, important to me in my field. So this is what we mean by interdisciplinarity. It's a collective intertwining of uh, interest and uh, and sharing of methods. So um, our first uh, speaker is Eric Murillo, and thank you so much. We we'll just so hello, good morning. Um, I first of all just want to say thank you to the organizers, Dr. Mel Pignano, for the opportunity to to be here today in front of such distinguished guests. Um Tiwahu Manso Taiwem. So I am a Piro Manso Tiwa indigenous person. Um I am also uh, a PhD uh, borderland scholar uh, studying sociology here at UTEP. And the reason that I'm part of this presentation, I suppose, has to do with my interest and my research, which is uh, focused on helping indigenous people from the borderlands reclaim our identity. So my work is looking at classification regarding the colonial uh, missions and the legacies and impacts on indigenous people today. And so when we think about uh, indigenous people, we are in an area where a lot of people do not have a lot of knowledge of the actual tribal people that are still here. Uh, how many people are familiar with Isleta del Sur? Hopefully everybody, right? 
Uh, how many other indigenous tribes can you all think of from the region, right? Hopefully you paid attention to the land acknowledgement statement, right? But the fact is most people are not familiar with the Piro Mansutiwa Pueblo San Juan de Guadalupe. Uh, originally we were brought here, forced here uh, during the, the colonial period, uh, during the Pueblo revolt. And we established communities or reconstituted our communities, uh, Socorro del Sur, Senecu del Sur, Isleta del Sur, and then we had uh, other relatives that were in the other missions here in the region, San Lorenzo, uh, and Guadalupe was the principal mission, right? And so what the challenge for us is that we are not a federally recognized tribe, right? So when you're having these conversations about government to government, we're excluded. Uh, we are not able to be included and to be authorized or, or given the recognition and respect that allows us to participate in the ceremonies that are tied to the water, right? So indigenous people, we recognize thousands of years ago the importance of water and maintaining uh, the cycle of life in this region, right? So our ceremonies, a lot of our ceremonies are related to continuing the cycle. Um, so if you have a lot of droughts and you're not letting us access the water in our ceremonies, you know, you can't blame us, right? Of course, I'm only kidding with that, but there is an importance there because without access to these sacred spaces, you're breaking this continuity. And one of the principal challenges that we have as indigenous people, Piro Mansotiwa people today with the Bureau of Indian Affairs has to do with this question of cultural continuity. In other words, am I practicing what my ancestors did when they were recognized as indigenous? Because if I'm not, then how can I be indigenous? And I say to them, give us back our land. Give us back the river. Give us back the access to the Aguasequia Madre. Give us back to access to all of these resources, because when you take us out of these resources and ask us to continue these practices, it's, it's near impossible, right? And the irony is that because we are not practicing certain things, the government says, well, you're not Indian anymore. You're not indigenous. You are not part of this landscape anymore. So with regards to that, I want to say thank you, a special thank you to Celia Dominguez Murillo, she is my grandmother, and despite all of the years of colonization and conquest, uh, the multiple nations that have entered this region and, and been part of this co uh, colonization, she was able to keep this history of my, my family intact, and that is the reason why today I'm still connected to it. And I want to give special thanks to the Piro Mansutiwa tribe in Las Cruces and all of our relatives. Um, you know, it's a pleasant surprise to see water in the river because usually this time of year when we collect our river willows for, for our ceremony for the spring, uh, it's a dry river. So it is it's such a, a pleasure to see water there. Um, and what I really want to convey is that there are indigenous people here. We are still here. We're trying to reclaim our presence and the connection to water, the ceremonies and our cycles is so important. And uh, if allowed to, we would love to work with the different institutions here and hopefully increase our uh, acknowledgement uh, from the outside world and hopefully our access to some of our, our sacred spaces. Thank you. Looks like it's, it's my turn again. Um, I am Elisa Milpignano again. I'm, I'm, I'm an assistant professor of dance and I direct a dance program at UTEP. And my scholarly and creative research investigates how choreography and dance contribute to theorizations of livability and unlivability in contested areas and border regions, such as our US-Mexico border, but also Israel-Palestine, in relation to military, political, and environmental conflicts. And um, when I look at peace discourses in relation to water discourses on scientific articles and institutional reports, there are some phrases that recur to describe the current situation. And I just take them out and this is a list. Growing population, soaring demand of water, altered environments, climate change threats, severe water scarcity, release of pollutants, 
higher risk of acute water-related disasters, water insecurity, civil strife, water as a weapon or casualty of war, water as a target of war, worsening water stress, enduring water nationalism, transboundary water conflict, water governance as a matter of national survival. And these are taken from global articles, not just from our region. Like many scholars of conflict, I wonder if it is even possible to discuss peace. The Wednesday Roundtable with uh, CJ Alvarez and Andy Everett, who's a member of the Isleta del Sub Pueblo, will address peace building through water. So the process of building peace. Can peace become an outcome or is it necessarily a process? How does peace relate to sustainability? Is building something sustainable enough to guarantee livability, dignity, survival, and justice? As a person working in the performing arts, I always question the border, the liminal space between reality and imagination, the present and utopia. For me, performance is a way to center the reality of one's own body and lived experience and set it in relation to an environment, which is made of human and other than human elements, and which is also ever-changing. Performance and choreography, as the art of organizing elements in space and time, are also about learning how to move in an environment, how to make decisions, decisions about your own and other elements' presence in an environment. How does an environment change us? How do we change an environment? What are the decisions that we make for the environment and what are the decisions made upon us by the environment? With what agency do we move? What are the reverberations of our decisions? And this is, this is why I think performance is an extremely important method to think about the environment, the movements of the environment and of water and the agency that all the elements have in such a process of ongoing transformation. And of course, also of all the practices that limit agency in an environment. One of the examples of performance-based research I have done in relation to water is Mapping the Rio, a performance I presented with my students last year in downtown El Paso after two years of research at the Rio Bosque Wetlands Park in collaboration with Dr. Alex Mayer as our dramaturg. So a uh, groundwater engineer that became a uh, uh, dance dramaturg. Tomorrow afternoon, we will present an interactive documentation of Mapping the Rio curated by student and performer Alia Candia at 3 p.m. with Alex and me. In this performance, we have looked at historical um, and more recent maps of the Rio Grande Rio Bravo interrogating the presence of the Rio in our life, in our community's lives, utilized our lived and inherited memories to renew our relationship with the river and develop a new sense of care. A vital part of the process of making mapping the Rio, besides Dr. Mayer's knowledge, was working with engineer and Isleta del Sub Pueblo member, Andy Everett, who will speak on Wednesday in the round table, and the Frontera poet, Gris Munoz. Such interdisciplinary knowledge is vital to effectively address water and ecological justice as a collaborative effort, questioning how water sovereignty and control are performed and choreographed and organized in our everyday lives and institutionally. Thank you, Liz, and now Luis Gert. I'm gonna go over here so everyone can see me. Okay. All right. Hi everyone. Uh, I know some of you have already met me through a lot of emails throughout the organization, right? Yes, I I tend to bug people a little bit, but we're all here. We made it. So this is good. Uh, so first to introduce myself, my name is Luis Garnica. I am a computer engineering graduate actually from the Universidad Autónoma de Chihuahua, and I was born in Chihuahua, Mexico. And I have the opportunity to do a lot of learning all around. 
I also did part of my computer engineering at the University of Wisconsin Stout through the CONAHEC program that was established with the university. So that was also a great learning experience for me. And I am very grateful for that. And, and then I came to UTEP, right? And I said, okay, I'm gonna start doing my masters. I'm a computer engineer. I focus a lot on hardware, but I need to extend myself and look at the software part. So I did a master engineering in software, right? After that, I went to the industry. I worked in the aerospace manufacturing and also in automotive, uh, in the automotive uh, industry, right? So it was a learning experience for me, uh, building machines, talking to machines. So, you know, I was very happy, you know, dealing with machines, not much of an issue until suddenly, okay, you know what? Now you have to talk to the clients, <laughs> right? And that's a completely other story when you start uh, being the product owner of the software that you're building, right? And then, so I continued, I did a lot of experience there and I came back to Utah because these guys didn't wanna let me go. <laughs> and they said, you know what, Luis? Uh, we need some help because we need to bring the computational aspect to the water domain, right? So even though as a com a computer scientists or software engineers, uh, people tend to have the misconception that it is a very isolated career, that we're only talking to the machines, we're only programming the machines, right? The nice thing about the machine is that it's not gonna talk back to us, right? We tell it what to do. And if something went wrong, it's because I programmed it wrong, right? But when it comes to actually uh, dealing with uh, research, talking to people, well, it's a completely other thing. It's a new challenge for us and we're introverts, <laughs> right? So that's, that's very interesting. So when I came into the water project, I didn't know anything. I didn't know what a watershed was. Uh, I didn't know about the Hueco Bolson, the Mesilla Aquifer. I didn't know any of that stuff. So I started going into the meetings and the first thing that we need to do when we enter a new domain is to listen, right? We need to listen, to look at the different perspectives or perspectives of people and try to really understand and come to a common knowledge. Because otherwise, the job that I'm gonna do as a software design engineer, is gonna, my end product is gonna be useless, right? If it's gonna be worthless because I didn't listen, because I didn't understand the domain, well, it doesn't make any sense for me to be there, right? But it's a challenge and it's something that I have incorporated here. So now what I do on research on this side, is not just develop the cyber infrastructure so that we can support the scientific domains, not just on water, but I also work alongside with the city of El Paso to, to bring some other services for older adults, so a completely different domain, and we have to talk to completely different people, older adults, right? <laughs> so that's also very interesting. Um, so I don't wanna take too long on this, but basically uh, if I relate my work to peace, is that talking to people, and bringing information and coming to a common understanding, that's what brings peace, right? So we need to understand each other. We need to listen to each other. That's very important. And when we come to that, then we can go to a common goal. Now, it is very difficult. We do have internal conflicts sometimes, discussions. Some people have different priorities, different perspectives. And that part is something that on the research side, we're bringing to the computer design environment as well, right? We are starting to build here at UTEP new systems that take into consideration all of the different perspectives. One of those projects is the sustainable water through integrated modeling. Uh, Alex is one of my collaborators in that project. And we also have new collaborators for Universidad Autónoma de Chihuahua. We are collaborating with Fascia Tech, right? And we are doing scientific models. We're doing modeling, but we're also making them available to everyone. And we're considering all of the perspectives. Everyone has different ways of talking, different measurement units. So it's not just about presenting the data, the graphs, but also giving context to that information in a way that everyone can understand it, right? So the good thing is that the technology to do that is here, right? We can do it right now. And now with the hype of artificial intelligence, there are some things that it helps with, some things that not. Just remember that garbage in, garbage out, we, we need data as well to feed those kind of computer systems. So it's very important to talk about the cooperation of data, which is something that we're doing a lot with our colleagues, with our colleagues at WASH, 
and also with our colleagues at WASEJ, because the first project that I started doing at WASEJ uh, was with them, right? So it was very, uh, also a, a nice learning experience. So if you want to learn more about my project and uh, learn about what strategies we implement into software design so that everyone can understand it, well, we have a talk tomorrow about it. So thank you so much for coming. And now, Professor Judith Diaz. Thank you, Melissa. Um, good afternoon. Thank you very much to all of you. Um, well, I'm a scientist. That's my background. And I am also um, have part in my heart, part of three institutions. The, the first one, the University of Chihuahua, then UTEP, and then the place that I work now, the Universidad Autónoma de Ciudad Juárez. I'm just going to address three issues, I think, in a small uh, or in a short paragraph. And it will be water through the environment, the Rio Grande, aquatic system health, well, water quality and aquatic microorganisms, and oh, sorry, I forget my glasses, and border bridges for water research. So nature creates its own connections, bridges, to allow water flow through the earth in the Hydrolog hydrological cycle. Snow deposited on the Colorado mountains fuse into water that flows through the landscape until become the Rio Grande. The Rio Grande keeps flowing down and ending its travesty at the Gulf of Mexico. In its path, it recharges aquifers along its basin, including those shared at the U.S.-Mexico border, such as El Bolson del Hueco at the El Paso Juarez border. It was here where my research adventures in limnology the study of continental waters, and ecotoxicology, the study of contaminant effects in the environment, started. I was not only crossing the five international bridges to come to pursue my master and doctoral studies at UTEP, but building bridges for international collaborations. At the beginning, we designed and implemented a sampling method for water and sediments to determine heavy metal concentrations along the Rio Grande. Then. We use its water to identify the impact of metal mixtures in a population of Platinum spatulus rotifers, an organism that lives in the Rio Grande. During this experience, we built a bridge or string it with IBWC. Then they teach us how to measure flow, depth, and join our samplings when possible. I also learn of the risk of sampling, but acquire knowledge on police procedures for teeth reports. There are still bridges pending to build. The next or the following adventure we embraced back on 2004 and 2008, at least mentioned, was the study of Chihuahuan spring desert, des Chihuahua's desert spring or water bodies. We travel, shared knowledge, and complement resources. We were detained for more than three hours in Ciudad Acuña del Rio, Piedras Negras, Eagle Pass borders. I don't remember which border was, due to a miscommunication. Uh, with the immigration officer. Just imagine one German, two US citizen, a Mexican, and a four year old, my son, in a Utah vehicle with many water samples going back to El Paso at night. Then, after many adventures and 20 years later, we are back in the Rio Grande looking for metals and microplastics, strengthened bridges at UTEP, IBWC in the United States, Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes in Mexico, and building new ones with other. U.S. government agencies, a Comisión Internacional de Aguas, Límites y Aguas en México, Junta Municipal de Aguas y Saneamiento, Universidad de, eh, Tecnológica de Ciudad Juárez, high schools in Juárez, and among other departments in the Universidad Autónoma de Ciudad Juárez in Mexico. We can only keep and maintain our water sources with enough quality for life if we work together and respect each other one talent and expertise. Everyone has something to give, even the energy and strength to cross the past. Thank you. Dr. Alex Mayer. Hello, I'm Alex Mayer. I'm a professor in civil engineering at UTEP. Um, and I want to thank everybody who's spoken before me. And I also, especially want to thank Commissioner Resendez for asking us to develop trust on the Rio Bravo in the same way that we have in the Rio Colorado. I hope we can participate in that process. 
Um, I'm an environmental engineer specializing in uh, water management, and much of my work deals with the impacts of climate change. Uh, but since I've come to uh, to UTEP only about four years ago, I've become very interested in how the border and migration around the border impacts uh, water resources uh, problems. And uh, when I think about uh, how I might be able to contribute uh, uh, to peace building, I think, um, like a lot of people have mentioned, trust is very important. And so I'd like to hope that I can contribute to building trust between uh, uh, people who are involved in, in, in uh, managing water, not just the two countries, but the, also the indigenous peoples that are here and were here a long time before two countries. And then I also aspire to do the science that will help to uh, make people's lives better and uh, uncover and, and address injustices through, through my work as a water resources engineer. And in particular, some of the projects that we've been uh, working on over the last couple of years that deal with border water issues, including modeling the, uh, the management of groundwater between the two countries, which is an issue that uh, I think remains uh, unresolved and, and uh, um, needs to be developed further to avoid future com uh, conflict and avoid uh, depleting our, our fresh groundwater. And then uh, you heard mention uh, this uh, short course that we're launching this uh, summer with WATCH on uh, hydro diplomacy. And in that course, uh, what we're hoping to do is to teach students about uh, diplomacy around water, especially as it relates to uh, the US and Mexico. And in that course, we'll do field trips in El Paso and also in, in Chihuahua and Ciudad Juarez to look at the water infrastructure that's been built by the two countries. And then the students will also participate in a mock negotiation to solve a, a problem, hypothetical problem, around uh, water resources and hear from experts on water, uh, some of whom are here today and don't know that I'm going to be inviting them to participate. Uh, so we're really looking forward to launching that, uh, that course with WATCH. Um, and then also, we're just wrapping up a project on open space in Juarez, in, Ciudad, uh, in, in Juarez and El Paso. And in that we had binational workshops to identify areas in both cities that uh, should be conserved or improved. And the binational aspect of that is not just that we included both cities, that uh, people from both cities, but because we share the river water and the groundwater, the conservation of open space in both cities is important in terms of maintaining our shared groundwater and also preventing uh, floods. And then also uh, uh, one another thing that I was involved in was consulting over the impacts of the border wall on flooding. Um, there's a section of the private wall that was built uh, in South Texas and uh, was involved in some of the, uh, the, the work uh, on, on the potential impacts of that. And uh, Melissa mentioned that I've been involved in interdisciplinary work, um, including in the arts. And I just wanted to say the reason why I do that is sort of to, sort of to challenge myself um, and, and get out of uh, uh, some of the, the things that we tell ourselves in the sciences and engineering that we really understand how the world works and we're the only ones we can so I appreciate uh, that, and then my um, before coming here, I spent about thirty years in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, surrounded by the Great Lakes. That got really boring. The the prop, the, all that water just got really boring. So I had to come down here, <laughs> um, and have, have never uh, regretted it. So uh, thank you for the opportunity. And finally, Evan Lopez. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Evan. I'm the curator of education for the Centennial Museum. And I'm also a PhD student. And my research uh, interests actually lie in the intersections of critical border studies, focusing uh, in US-Mexico border education, uh, border ontology, border epistemology, and now recently, um, the role of museums uh, in marginalized communities. What should they ought to, you know, the what role should they take in addressing the social, cultural, and um, educational needs of marginalized communities, specifically like the U.S.-Mexico border? 
Um, I'm so used to presenting at academic conferences that I wrote my remarks on a paper. So for the sake of time and kind of to get the essence of what I have to say, I'm just going to read what I wrote. Um, as the only cultural and natural history museum in the region, the Centennial Museum in Chihuahuan Desert Gardens, uh, part of its mission is to and vision is to serve as a supporting unit to the university's academic departments and to celebrate the story of life in the Chihuahuan Desert. This underscores the importance of collaborative efforts to, ad to address water-related challenges in our region, because after all, water is life. Through the collective expertise of academic department, departments, community partners, and diverse participants on both sides of the U.S.-Mexico border, we aim to bridge literal and meta metaphorical, metaphysical as well, borders in our pursuit of water, sustainability, and conservation, and peace. Through our exhibits and inclusive programming, we invite discourses that recognize that solutions emerge from many approaches, not just scientific approaches or social science approaches, but all approaches together. For example, in March of 2022, the Centennial Museum hosted Waterways, which was an interdisciplinary exhibit showcasing various perspectives on the significance of water. This exhibit encompassed historical, artistic, economic, scientific, social, spiritual, and the political dimensions of water. It was part of the Smithsonian's Institute Museum on Main Street program. Moreover, the museum's additions uh, to this exhibit focused on the border region's relationship with water, collaborating with local experts and researchers to explore its sources, future availability, and influence on, on life. In September of 2022, the museum created an exhibit to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the Civil Engineering Department. And one of the main components of this exhibit was the water section from the International uh, Boundary and Water Commission to the work that UTEP's civil engineering alumni is working on on water issues on the border. Another example of the type of work that we're doing right now is our current exhibit, uh, A Waddle Through Time. Uh, ducks, is, uh, it's primarily focused on ducks and the conservation of ducks and how humans uh, you know, partake in, in safeguarding them. But it also focuses on water. While we're safeguarding ducks, we're also safeguarding their water habitats. My capacities as a curator of education extend beyond just a representative of the museum and the university. They also represent a commitment to interdisciplinary collaboration and community outreach. By integrating educational initiatives with research-driven insights, we aim to empower our visitors with a with the necessary knowledge to engender positive change. Through our collaborative partnerships and programming, we strive to make connections that transcend both geographical borders and these in dis disciplinary silos or these disciplinary confines that sometimes prevent real action. And I just want to mention that this conference is a perfect example of how to do that. Central to our role in celebrating the life in the Chihuahuan Desert, we need to explicitly convey that the interconnectedness of water with border and eco ecological and social dynamics is crucial to this region. Through this Chihuahuan Desert Gardens and our, you know, our botanical garden, I don't know if any of you have walked around there. So the goal of that is to advocate for water sustainability and conservation by emphasizing the importance of native and adaptable plants. Additionally, we strive to showcase the beauty of the desert landscape and challenge the misconception of deserts as these barren, lifeless landscapes. Through our exhibits and educational programming and public outreach, we also strive to amplify the voices of those often marginalized from this discourse, highlighting the lived experiences of those most affected by the lack of representation, water scarcity, and environmental degradation among many. We aim to raise awareness for environmental, ecological, and cultural stewardship, but most importantly, to dismantle the hegemonic discourses that prevent real action and real education. Furthermore, this conference is a call to action. It represents one of the most pragmatic ways in which academics, educators, community members, students, and cultural workers like myself can bring awareness to the importance of water and peace as we aim to address the complexities of water issues in peace building, it is imperative to center our discussions on equity, justice, and inclusivity. 
As we welcome you to this year's conference, or uh, World Water Week, I invite you to learn from all the presenters' unique perspectives. I also want to extend an invitation uh, for you all to visit the Centennial Museum and Chihuahuan Desert Gardens and to learn more from our exhibits and continue the mission of water sustainability and conservation. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. <clears throat> and to for the last minutes of this opening uh, plenary, we have organized some breakout rooms uh, so we can where we can all interact. But I also want to invite you to come back. Uh, so we'll end at one, but I invite you to come back at 1.30 because the assistant manager of the Rio Bosque Wetlands Park will give a talk entitled uh, Actions of Care and Stewardship at the Rio Bosque, which is exactly the kind of uh, uh, call to action and labor that uh, Evan was um, making a reference to. So uh, these are the uh, breakout rooms. So whoever wants to join the uh, discussion on water diplomacy can stay here in the auditorium. Uh, who wants to discuss regional water quality and uh, wildlife habitat can follow Dr. Liz Walsh. And if somebody wants to uh, reflect upon, maybe try out physically what it means to activate the bodies to bridge borders, can follow me. Uh, thank you so much. Hopefully you can join the uh, breakout rooms. Otherwise, we hope to see you at 1.30 back here or at other events throughout the week. Thank you so much.